Tonight, I invite your attention to the book of Acts, chapter number 14. Acts chapter number 14, and we're going to begin reading in verse number 19, and I'm going to take my thoughts from verse number 22 as we finish up in, finishing up the year. Over these past few weeks, we have been reminded of things that we are to continue in, and tonight we will be talking about continuing in the faith. Acts chapter 14, we begin reading in verse number 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, They returned again to Lystra, to Iconium, and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, that we we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for your word and pray now, Lord, that you will work and bless in this time, in these few minutes of the message tonight. We pray your spirit to speak to our hearts. Father, we ask it now. In the name of Jesus, and for his sake we do pray. Amen. One of the greatest weaknesses of the church today is that many of the disciples of today's church are not grounded in the faith. They lack knowledge. They lack knowledge of spiritual things. They lack knowledge of the word of God. They lack knowledge of the doctrines and the teachings of the word of God. The prophet Hosea in Hosea Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 said that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The knowledge that at that time in the nation of Israel was not being given by the priests. Who were not teaching them the laws and the commandments and the precepts of God. As they were worshiping idols. And the prophet admonishes them that because they do not know the word of God, because they lack in faith, they're destroyed. And I see the church going downhill, especially in America. We're not destroyed yet, but man, we're down the path. We're headed there. Church has already lost a lot of influence, and church attendance is down in America. See, Christian, many Christians don't even make the time to come to church where they can learn and grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we look at the word faith there in verse number 22, The Greek word there, exhorting them to continue in the faith. That word there means credence, moral conviction, reliance on salvation in Jesus Christ and him alone. That's a true faith. A system of religious or gospel truth itself. In the book of Jude, in Jude in verse 3, the Bible says that we are to earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. The body of teaching. The body of doctrine. That we now contain in this wonderful book that God has given us, the word of God. And if we are to continue to reach people with the gospel of Christ, 
and continue till the Lord comes, we must continue in the faith, even if there are those who do and will not. And there are those who do not, and those who will not. Paul and Barnabas here, being founded there in this particular city, preaching the gospel and seeing people saved and God working in a great and mighty way, the Jews, certain of those Jews that did not like the preaching of the gospel of Christ, did not like Paul's preaching, came to where Paul was and stirred up the people so that they took Paul to the edge of the city and stoned him, presuming him to be dead. Now, growing up, you may have had rocks thrown at you as a kid. You may have thrown some rocks as a kid. I know I had. And when, when a rock hits you, it really hurts. But to have so many people throw stone after stone after stone so that you're unconscious and left for dead. This was Paul's state. And after those that were very pleased in their work had stoned the Apostle Paul, the disciples were there around the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul woke up. Then he got up. And then he went back into the same city that stoned him, presumably to death, to preach the gospel. How many of us would do that? Not too many. From there, he went to the city of Derby, and then they worked their way back to their ascending church in Antioch, going through the cities, going through the cities of Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, where they had saved souls with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and established churches. And in verse 22, it says there that they went there, went back, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. He was exhorting those young disciples And confirming those young converts because those young converts were apt to waver. Easily persuaded away from their faith. And little things would shock them. The old friends that they have would lure them back to sin or back to the religious and back to the religion that they had once tried to live in. The religious wanted to be able to confuse these young converts and these new converts, teaching men's traditions as gospel truth. And this still happens today. Where men's traditions are taught as gospel. Where for me, if it's not in the word of God, you know, I kind of do this. And it goes. If it's not in the book, I don't need it. The Bible warns us not to follow the traditions of men and to follow old wives' tales. But to follow the truth of the Word of God. Those, these new converts, they needed to be fed and they needed to be watered. They needed to be taught in the faith and in the word of God. They needed to be taught line by line, precept by precept, teaching by teaching. As we all need to do. 
No matter how long we have been saved. See, the church is a school of faith. Where are you going to learn about the faith of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's not in the public school. Not anymore. Not even close. You'd be fortunate to find a Bible in a public school, I think. I doubt you'd find one in the library. Although I could be wrong. You're not going to find it in a public school. Unfortunately, you don't find it in many homes. In today's society. Because many homes are broken in today's society. Many homes are a mess in today's society. Many homes in our society have their people that are unsaved. And of course, in this home that is unsaved, you're not going to hear the word of God in the gospel. It's not going to be taught there. Thank God for parents who are here who teach their children the word of God. And teach their children the gospel of Christ at home. And the church is a school that is to help in developing that faith. The headmaster of the school is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he is the head of the church and the savior of the body. The apostles that came before and the prophets that came before and the evangelists that are here today and the pastors and the teachers that are here today are subordinate teachers to the headmaster. If they don't follow the headmaster, if they don't teach the word of God, they ought not to be teaching in this church or any church. Thankful for the teachers that we have in our church because they do teach and preach the word of God. And we are all students under that headmaster too. Even the subordinate teachers like me. I learn from the headmaster by having my nose in the Word of God, in the book. And doing my best to read and study it and to gain understanding through the working of the Holy Spirit in my heart and life that gives me the understanding of the Word of God and gives you the same understanding of the Word of God when you read it and study it. Unfortunately, many Christians today, they don't even bother to take the time to read it, let alone study it. When it comes to the word of God. And the faith that we have is found in the word of God. Not anywhere else. And if we are, continue, if we are to continue in the faith. We must be faithful to Christ's school. In order to learn something, you've got to attend class. Now, I wasn't much, you know, for playing hooky. Because I knew what would happen if I did. So I wasn't much for playing hooky. I went to class. But sometimes when I went to class, I didn't have the textbook with me. It's hard to do math when you don't have the textbook. It really is. One of the reasons why I'm not great at math. I didn't take it seriously enough. And, and when, when I was taught in junior high school, I was taught geography. I loved geography. Loved to learn about countries and I loved to learn about their capitals. Loved to learn about their shapes. 
I loved that. So I was there with book, engrossed. And I loved lunch. Lunch was one of my favorite times at school. I got straight A's at lunch. But there are many, there are many Christians who only come to class when it's convenient for them to do. They only attend class when it's convenient for them. Many students don't bring their textbook, their Bible, to the school of faith. And many of them don't come with the right attitude. Now I understand there were some days when I went to school that I didn't really feel, really feel like being there. And my mind was elsewhere. There are even times like that now. And those days, I didn't learn as much as I could have and should have. Because I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I didn't have the right heart attitude. Come to church. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir, and I understand that, and I appreciate that. Come to church. Have your textbook. Always have your textbook. Whether you bring it physically, whether you use an app on your smartphone, which I do for my personal Bible reading, bring your textbook to class. The only way you're going to learn. And then come with the right heart attitude. Come with an open heart. Come enthusiastic and ready to learn at the feet of the greatest teacher that has ever lived. Our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you get more out of it that way. In fact, Prepare your heart on Saturday night. Start then. Get your heart ready. Your mind right, if you will. And you'll have a greater joy when you come to church. And you'll be excited and enthused about hearing the Sunday school teacher at 945, hearing the preaching at 1045. If you have an open heart, and an open mind to what the Lord is about to give you through his teacher and his preacher. And we who are faithful to do this, we need to encourage others who are not to do the same. Missed you at Sunday school this morning. Hope to see you next week. And make sure to bring your Bible. You want to make sure the preacher's right. Encourage others to do the same. In the day and age in which we live, as I mentioned in Jude, in the book of Jude, in verse number three, we, are, we need to be able to defend our faith against all opposition. To earnestly contend. That word contend means to strive for. As an athletic competition. To contend, defend the faith because faith is under attack even here in America and it's going to get worse it's only going to get better when the Lord comes I believe 
Until then, it's going to get worse. And the opposition will get worse, and the opposition will become more vocal. Those COVID mandates, back when COVID started, to even shut down worship services and churches across America, a test of power. And how much the government can get away with, with their power. Even stopping Christians from attending church. And it'll get worse. And the opposition of the gospel and Satan who is behind them will use any excuse they can get to oppose our faith and try to defeat it. So we have to be ready to defend it. And if we are to do this, if we are to defend our faith, we need to know our faith. How can we defend something we don't know? It's only logical. And the only way to know our faith is to study. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And there are so-called pastors and so-called preachers that stand behind pulpits here in Neodiche, here in the state of Kansas, and around the United States of America that do not rightly divide this word of truth when they preach it. They do not. Men's traditions, old wives' tales, and other sorts of things. They replace it. And if we study the word, then we will know what is true and what is not. And the place to be able to study is at the schoolhouse of the church, as well as at home privately. We need to learn to pray and we need to learn to witness and we need to learn a life. We need to learn to live a life for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to continue in the faith. So that others can come to know Christ as their Savior and the church will continue until the Lord comes. We are to be encouraged because God always has a remnant of true believers found all throughout history, found in the Word of God. It's always been a remnant. There will always be a remnant. We pray we may be part of that remnant until he comes. I appreciate your time and attention tonight. Hope you got something that will encourage your heart as you go. Here this evening.